My name is Arturo O'Farrell. I'm the founder and the artistic director of the Afro-Latin Jazz Alliance, and we welcome you to La Plaza, uh, our Friday evening showcase here at our digital village. Uh, this uh, Friday, today, we are actually featuring a wonderful concert that I did for City Center called Adelante Cuba, which featured some of the greatest names in Cuban music, including Omar Portuondo, Telmari Diaz, and Yasek Manzano, and uh, orchestra uh, Camerata Romeo. What you're gonna see is a smaller subsection of it that was filmed at the Green Space during my residency, Radical Acts of Musical Deviancy. This evening on this show, you will watch the, one of my favorite musicians on the planet, Yasek Manzano, as he stretches the definition for what is jazz, what is Afro-Cuban jazz, what is all of it. You're also gonna see my dear friend whom I love, love, love to work with, the great dancer, Ayodeli Cassell. It's a time of celebration, so please enjoy this rendition of Plaza, La Plaza Fridays at Afro-Latin Jazz Lions Digital Village. Thank you. Good evening, good evening, bienvenidos. And bienvenido to spring. I cannot think of a more, que? <laughs> I cannot think of a better time in our history to be celebrating the magnificent culture of the island of Cuba, which, like other Caribbean nations, sits at the very crossroad of civilizations. In Cuba, disparate cultures from Africa, Europe, and Asia coalesced into a wholly original and harmonious whole. As Arturo O'Farro said himself in an interview for AARP en Español, Cuba nos ofrece la imagen del futuro. Cuba gives us an image of the future. And he and our other superstar guest this evening, Ayodele Cassel, have selected as their modes of expression two quintessential American art forms that, like the island of Cuba, represent a melding of disparate cultures and represent the artistic embodiment of the best of our American creed, e pluribus unum, out of many, one, tap and jazz. Tap artist Ayodele Cassel was hailed by no less a genius than the great, the late great Gregory Hines as the greatest young tapper in the world. Yes, thank you very much. And when you see her, you will not disagree. <laughs> one of the greatest. There are many great, but she's one of the greatest. Uh, as a choreographer, she has uh, created pieces for the City Center Encore series. She has been given commissions by Harlem Stages and the Apollo. As a topper, she has performed around the world with Gregory Hines and with um, Sabian Glover in his NYOT, Not Your Usual Tap Group. She performed at the White House. She did her one-woman show, While I Have the Floor, at the Spoleto Festival USA, and an excerpt from it rocked the house at the Hillary Broadway for Hillary fundraiser during our last election. Maybe if they'd done more than an excerpt, we wouldn't be in the situation we're in today. So Ayodela for 2020, got to do the whole darn thing. She won the 2017 Hoofer Award. Arturo O'Farrell is a pianist, a composer, an educator. He heads the CUNY Brooklyn uh, Jazz Program. He cut his teeth with the Carla Bley Orchestra as a teen, went on to become a soloist with people such as Dizzy Gillespie and Harry Belafonte, for whom he also did arrangements. In 2007, he founded the Afro-Latin Jazz Alliance to celebrate educate and perform the Latin jazz tradition. He has won six Grammys most recently in 2018. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome two artists who are headliners at the Adelante Cuba Festival and who also bring us all forward as a culture and a country reminding us of our common humanity. Please welcome them, Arturo O'Farrell and Carla <laughs> and Ayodele Cassel.
you. Hello. Thank hello, you and hello. hello and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So both of you are people who are continuing beautiful artistic traditions while innovating them. But I want to start by talking a bit about your formation as artists. Okay. So for you, mm -hmm. Ayodele, you came to tap somewhat late. You, yes. you didn't discover it till you were 19 years old. Can you tell us about that discovery? Because you went to NYU Tisch to become an actress. Yes. I and was... then what happened? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I started, I think, my senior, senior year in high school. I um, became obsessed with old movies. I um, and uh, I like I loved Ingrid Bergman and Cary Grant and you know Clark Gable and I was really really into that. And then I discovered Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. I saw uh, I think maybe Top Hat or Swing Time, and it just just I don't know. It took my breath away. And I remember um, you know being in the Bronx and my room like I would go home after school and I would go to the library to rent their movies and uh, and I would just look at it and try to teach myself how to do what they were doing <laughs> but um, I mean not very well but I was like <laughs> I just move my feet like this but I was so inspired by that I thought it was I thought it was magical and um, I don't know. I just I wanted to be a part of that. I didn't know. I didn't grow up dancing, so mm -hmm. I didn't even know even about like dance culture, about like dance studios. That wasn't something that was part of my um, you know um, experience as a kid. Um, but when I went to NYU uh, as an acting major, we I think freshman year we we took uh, some movement classes because they they didn't want us like bumbling around the stage. So um, we took Tai Chi the first year, and then the second year. They had us, they, they said, you can take Tai Chi or you can take tap. And I thought, finally, this is going to be my, my chance to like, <laughs> live my dream. I'm going to be know? ginger. I mean, cause, yes, because I wanted to be Ginger Rogers. I mean, my prom dress, I went, I made my mom go out to get a prom dress that looked like her dress in swing time. Like, <laughs> it didn't really look like it at all. But in my mind, I was like, I'm ginger, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so I finally had this opportunity to go um, to take this class. And I... I went to Payla Shoe Source to get some shoes because I didn't want to go. I didn't want any other any dance shoes. I wanted them to look like gingers in like this movie. Mm -hmm. um, and I found this like like suede lace ups and I put some taps on them, and I was living my best life in that tap <laughs> class. And it was like for lap he heels, spin heel to heel for lap. I mean, but I loved it so much. But um, um, so that was really like my my. Um, but you're a prodigy because to go from that to <laughs> then being one of the only women dancing with Savion Glover, well, that's well, it was like really divine divine intervention because at that time, uh, bringing the noise, bringing the funk had opened uh, at the Public Theater, and I had actually met um, uh, one of my mentors who uh, who was my peer as well. His name was Bakari Wilder, and uh, he was going to NYU as well, and uh, he was doing the show at, at at the Public, and he said you should come see it. I said is there a tap in it? <laughs> He was like, yeah. So when I saw that show, it changed my life. I just, I immediately, it was the first time nobody had ever seen or heard anything like that, you know, up until that point, you know, that spot. I'll never forget it. I I was like, <laughs> and I saw, I saw that. I was like, I think, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And I just became obsessed. I became, I was talking to Yasek um, yeah. backstage. I just became obsessed with it. So for Arturo, you grew up in the Afro-Cuban tradition. Your father was the great Chico O'Farrell. That's correct. Who was a big band leader here. Thank yes. Thank you. Applause, Thank you very please. much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and then became an exile here really after the, the revolution. Um, but for you, there, you had kind of moved away from your father's tradition and were following Chick Corea and other people. Uh, and then at a certain point, you talk about feeling both a filial duty and a duty uh, as an artist to maintain his legacy. Can you talk about that shift? Sure, I can. Um, I think it's the honor-bound duty of every young person to absolutely reject everything that they're taught. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if your parents teach you. <laughs> and so I, I did. I rejected uh, my culture, my, my Latino-ness. Mm -hmm. I came to this country as a five-year-old Mexican From Mexico, child. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, I got the idea that we were less than uh, the rest of the population. I don't know where I got that <laughs> idea. It's so supportive. <laughs> In any case, I, I, I did reject my father's music, and I began a career in free jazz and uh, the New York City jazz circles. I had the privilege of working 
uh, with the great Carla Blay yes. uh, for three years, who is a great innovator, genius, yeah. great, great genius of modern jazz. And um, over time, I just made a career doing freelance work. And at one point, the great Andy Gonzalez, who is a bass playing brother of Jerry Gonzalez of the Ford Apache Band and mm -hmm. uh, a real important figure in the development and the history of Latin, mm -hmm. said, I've been following your career. And I looked at him. With, when anybody says they've been following your career, you have to look a little askance. because you know. That's, Are you a stalker? I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I had a career. But he said, I've been following your career, and you should be proud of your roots and reconnect mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that somebody said that to me. And I looked at him, and I went, what? I said, yeah, man, this music that you rejected is really hard. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the University of uh, Andy Gonzalez at the corner of Ford Independence Avenue in the Bronx, mm -hmm. baby, yeah. and sat down, and he showed me the history of this music, and my, my life changed because this music is not easy. This mm -hmm. music is difficult. It's rich. It's powerful. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a music that, that, that has changed my life, and mm -hmm. I think that uh, I really owe Andy a tremendous debt of gratitude. Um, and then my father kind of noticed that uh, he, he had a resurgence in his career is what happened. He had been kind of sidelined into the jingle business. And then Todd Barkin, who was just uh, proclaimed an NEA jazz master, um, said, what's your father doing? I said, man, he's just writing jingles. And he said, well, bring him out of retirement. Get him out here. We'll do some recordings. And uh, my father had that incredible uh, resurgence, renaissance in his career at the end of his life. At which point, I, uh, he was older, and he couldn't quite handle the vicissitudes of leading a big band. So I kind of stepped into that role. And, um, and I really assumed command of his ship. The and Afro then Cuban the Afro-Cuban jazz, jazz Orchestra at Birdland. At Birdland. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had the great pleasure of working with Wynton Marsalis, who offered me the opportunity to bring my own orchestra to jazz at Lincoln Center. And I created something called the Afro-Latin Jazz Orchestra because I decided that Cuba was just a small, small part of Latin jazz, a small part of the Americas. And even though Cuba is a very important part of this story, there are places like Peru and Colombia and uh, Brazil. And uh, I mean, these are places that have as rich a tradition of jazz and jazz-like activities as any part of the world, and uh, well, you've talked about it as a pan Af pan American uh, phenomenon, not just uh, yeah. Cuban phenomenon. Uh, no, I also think of it as a pan African. Yes, uh, it is. It's a pan African uh, art form, yeah. and we're very, very lucky to be able to participate in music that was born richly in uh, in Africa, and mm -hmm. that we're just blessed to be able to live our lives and be able to express our souls through this music. And I'd like you to talk, Ayodele, because mm. you discovered Latin music when you went to live in Puerto Rico with your grandparents, because you're half Puerto Rican. Can you talk about the importance Ye of Latin music in your and, life? In my and, life? Oh, yeah. Well, um, actually, Arthur, I can relate to that, because uh, when I was a kid, my grandfather, I, living in Puerto Rico, um, I moved there when I was nine, uh, would play it all the time. And he would play it specifically, in my mind, how I remember it was... Uh, uh, in, on Saturdays, going to the mall and the mu in, in, at home all the time, and I just remember asking him to stop playing it because I felt like it gave me like a stomach ache, you know, like that. I like started to associate it with indigestion, you know, and so I really, <laughs> you know, and, I, and you know, because I was young, I didn't, you know, I pro probably was listening to Debbie Gibson, <laughs> but um, but I um, but um, I when I was uh, I would say 19 in college as well. Um, my friend, uh, who was Puerto Rican, she didn't grow up there, but you know her, her, her family was Puerto Rican, and she loved Latin music. And we would go um, to the, you know, the clubs around New York City just to dance and listen to it. It was the first time that I started to really appreciate it mm -hmm. um, in a different way. And then when I started tap dancing. Uh, I don't know, I just kind of put the two and two together. I'm like, I really, I love tap and I love this music. It's just, it's innate, it's, it's part of who I am. Um, and I just started dancing to it. And you've said time. sometimes when you dance, you feel like Tito Puente. I said, yeah, I, feel, I say, <laughs> yeah, I love, I feel like I said, like, Rey Barreto on the, on the congas. You know, I love, I, um, I love it. It feels like home to me. Um, I think much like tap dancing, I always say tap is magic. I think that, um, People, whether you're three or 90, they love it. They have a connection to it. And I feel the same way about Latin music. I mm -hmm. think that when you play Latin music anywhere, whether it be a restaurant at the, you know, at, 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 in a club or anywhere, in the elevator, people just respond to it in that way. And um, 
I, I love it. I just think two magical items together. <laughs> so part of this festival is about reviving the cultural exchange mm -hmm. and dialogue that has gone on really since the 19th century between the United States and Cuba. You've been going back to Cuba since 2002. Mm -hmm. And we have to take a moment, a little history moment, a little Cuban history moment. Your last name is O'Farrell because your ancestor, Ricardo O'Farrell E. O'Grady, right. <laughs> was named by the British South Sea Company as an agent in 1715. That's true. So there's, the, all of these worlds are all so interconnected. Mm -hmm. But back to you, in 2002, you start going back and working with musicians there, and you were in Cuba in 2015 when... Uh, Obama lifted really parts of the embargo. What was that like to be there in that moment? Wow. Um, the, we've been going, yeah, I've been going to Cuba three, four, sometimes five times a year since 2002 um, and working diligently to uh, bring musicians up to New York, send musicians down there, and just in general to have an exchange. And a, I was foreseeing the day that uh, that there might be a, 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 a resurgence of cooperation between the two nations. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want commerce to be the guiding principle behind it. Mm -hmm. So I was really working very hard all those years to make sure there were a lot of cultural connections. Because otherwise, and it's happening now, there's a Sheraton Hotel in Havana. You know, things like mm -hmm. that. It's just commerce always rules our lives, and I get sick and tired of it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I worked very hard to bring musicians to go back and forth. And uh, on that day, the thing that happened was that we were rehearsing with a wonderful dance company called Malpaso in, uh, in their synagogue that they rehearse in, on, uh, in Vedado. And there was a kind of a, 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 you know, a hubbub going on. Somebody said, well, there's about to be a big announcement. And we went downstairs in the community room and gathered around a TV and watched President Raul Castro and President Barack Obama say something that I never thought I'd hear from any politician in the history of my life. We have failed policy. We have a fail. We have failed to do right by our two nations. I thought that was an incredible moment. Just to have a politician say there is a failed policy is worth it. Um, but the moment was so emotional for so many people. There were literally people who were stunned. I was watching Cubans just walk around in a daze. Um, I also watched people openly weeping, and uh, you know, f I, it was all I could do to keep myself from crying because it was something that I had really wanted my father to see, but also because it represented, and of course, we're in the most sorry-ass state in the history of the United States that we're in right now, but, um, We've gone completely backwards. Um, but at one point, it looked like we might even have a chance at uh, ending this horrendous embargo that mm -hmm. has uh, starved and uh, suffocated my people mm -hmm. for decades. Um, but uh, for a moment there, it, it, there was just incredible joy and tears and celebration. And we recorded an album the next day. And I really believe that music is spirit. Mm -hmm. Spirit is music. And every single note on that record has the spiritual power of that hope that, 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 that we had that day. Yeah, it's called The Conversation Continues, and it's beautiful. And it's an, is it not a, a reference to that famous exchange between Dizzy Gillespie and uh, Chano Pozo, it is. The, it, it, the bongo player in 1947? <laughs> they had, I, 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 I decided that, that there's a cloud somewhere in heaven where Dizzy Gillespie and Chano Pozo are having a drink. Mm -hmm. And continuing a conversation that began when they wrote Manteca, yeah. in which one said to the other, well, it, obviously they couldn't say this to each other because they both spoke different languages. Of course, Dizzy Gillespie was fond of saying that Chano Posa does not speak English, I don't speak Spanish, but we both speak African. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that conversation was about what you're playing is just like what I love and why. And they started discovering the truth, and the truth is always scary. Yeah. The mm -hmm. truth is that what we think we've invented mm -hmm. was invented in Africa. <laughs> don't, don't, don't tell the president that. I'm okay with that news. I'm okay, I'm okay with it. I don't need to be the inventor of anything. I just want to discover things. Yeah. So, Ayodele, you're so 
keenly aware of being one of the few women mm -hmm. who's the real face of tap because it's still mm -hmm. a very male mm -hmm. art form and of the sort of lineage of women mm -hmm. who came before you what do you hope your legacy is you're you're young yet but in in yeah. your in your one woman show there are hints of what's what's my posterity what's what am i leaving the yeah. future generations i mean i do want to say that um you know it is changing i mean there was when i first started like in the 90s there was definitely a very male centered art form and now it's you know the it's it's changing even by virtue of the fact that i'm sitting here um i am really excited by being able to express myself and live my life and bring everything that I am fully to each moment. So, um, and I want everybody to have that same experience. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, this dance has taught me about culture, identity, expression, language. Um, it has reconciled um, many things for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I've learned a lot about myself and about just being a black and Puerto Rican woman mm -hmm. on this earth. And so I want to just always bring all that I am to each moment. And I want everybody else to feel like they can do the exact same thing. Well, you know? watching you, one yeah. does feel that. Yeah, it's, thank you. It uh -huh. resonates. It definitely does. Uh -huh. So one last question for you before you introduce your musicians and, and this piece that you're going to do together. Uh, you have spoken. <laughs> What piece? Your, are we what piece? Yeah, you're supposed to, to perform. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Everyone can just go back out and drink yeah. again. Uh -huh. So um, you have spoken about not being fixed in your identity, not deciding I'm this and I'm not that. If you leave yourself open, the universe is yours. So what is it that you hope to become as your journey as a creative person continues? I... It, it, <laughs> I don't ever want to be comfortable. I don't ever want to be, I just like to have my world challenged, mm -hmm. musically, socially, politically. I just don't, I, maybe it's artistic ADHD, but I can't sit in one place. Mm -hmm. I need to experience uh, odd meters, strange chords, different concepts. Mm -hmm. I don't, I just, I, I, fi I find that people have a choice and a lot of times they make it early in life to fix themselves in a finite place in the continuum and I, I, I can't do that I just I feel more comfortable on that continuum because on that continuum you really recognize that we're we are connected from Thailand to Swaziland to Bolivia to Brooklyn we are connected and if you fix yourself in a point in space you've just set humanity back 50 years and what we need to do, we need to, more than ever in our lives today at this moment is recognize that we are responsible for one another. And I think that the more you experience uh, that continuum, uh, the less fearful you get of having your ass kicked artistically, socially, culturally, and po politically. And that, that's, that's what I want. That's what I want my legacy to be. That's what I want my message to be. It's a beautiful one. Wonderful. Will you run for president? <laughs> <laughs> You're the perfect combination. Mexican, Cuban, it's Irish. German, too. Yeah. Irish, German, Mexican, Cuban. You know, my wife is African American and Jewish, so there you go. My kids, we my are the kids. World. Yeah, they my can kids sing are, are the mess. world and mean it. <laughs> So do you want to tell us, this is the first time tonight, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, that you two have ever performed together. I'm sure it will not be the last. It, so. was, it was so beautiful. And I felt like a homecoming this afternoon oh. when we started running through things. It felt so, so warm and natural and beautiful and easy. And we just looked at each other and went, wow. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing. It was very special. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're going to do, or do you just want us to experience it? Well, we're kind of going to do a few pieces, if that's yes. okay. Um, yeah. We have an incredible cast of musicians. We'll begin by uh, introducing a, a, a brilliant Brazilian bass player by the name of Amanda Rusa, um, who I've known for many years. And mm -hmm. we also have uh, with us Gabe Globus Honick, who is mm -hmm. uh, an incredible percussionist. We have... Um, Mike Swoop, who is uh, a terrorist on the electronics. He's just the baddest cat in the world. Mm -hmm. And an old friend of mine who I met when I was his teacher mm -hmm. at Juilliard. 
And actually, he kicked my ass and changed my life. So that's what's supposed to happen. His name, of, of course, is Yasek Manzano. And he is a Cuban. And he is a Cuban. <laughs> and uh, I love these people dearly. So I guess uh, we're going to do maybe a duo, maybe a trio, maybe some soft shoe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then, of course, we're going to end up with some music that uh, is contemporary, electronica, and Cuba all at once. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to get off the stage and let you delight this audience. You are incredible, and we could have talked all night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yasek. Yasek Manzano, ladies and gentlemen.
Gabe Globus Hone, Mike Swoop. We're gonna do a little uh, shiny two step. It's because, you know what? This is all music, man. There's no jazz, there's no Latin. There's just us. That's all it is.
comenzando con lo que tú quieras. Y después a las nueve, que te estoy hoy de todo, que me hicimos más, comenzando con lo que tú quieras. Y después a las nueve empezaba, era por su vida. Cassel, Amanda Rusa, Kate Globus Honek, Mike Swoop, So one of the things that 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 I love about Yasek is um, he's also got artistic ADHD, <laughs> and he's not content to sit in one place. Uh, and his commitment to young people and young musicians and his inability to focus is uh, <laughs> endearing to me. I guess I can identify with it. <laughs> but um, we're going to play a piece of his called Polonius, and uh, we don't know where it'll go. If you feel the urge to uh, transform or levitate or uh, just <laughs> dance or move in any way that fits your groove, Please do so, because we don't know what's going to happen. We do know that we're with you, and that has made all the difference in the world to us.
Was Honig, Amanda Russa, Yasek Manzano, Ayodele Cassette, Arturo Fari, thank you. on Saturday night. Don't miss it. Thank you so, so much. And thank you for being an incredible audience. Adelante!